Europa Universalis 4 is a popular grand strategy game that has fascinated people for the past 10 years since it came out. In August of next month, we are indeed celebrating the 10 year anniversary of this amazing game. And whilst it's always had a very loyal and established player base, it is still losing that player base with each passing month. Less and less players opt to play EU4, instead they go for other games such as Hearts of Iron 4, Crusader Kings 3, and a variety of other paradox games that have a more updated engine, have newer content and present a lot more interesting aspects of the grand strategy field. That being said, there is something about Europa Universalis 4 and its upcoming new version that we need to discuss today because that's right, we're going to be talking about Europa Universalis 5, when about it is going to come out and what's the new things that will likely be in EU5. Take note though, this is all speculation there's nothing confirmed by Paradox Interactive themselves. This is stuff that I gathered myself from the forums, from various posts from the developers, and things that just make a lot of logical sense considering it's been 10 years and what used to be the flagship of Paradox Interactive, because that's right, E4 was the flagship for a very long time, flagship game that is, that has since been replaced uh, by Hearts of Iron 4 recently, because it is what it is. Hearts of Iron 4 has a player base that is four times the size of EU4 as of now and it's definitely increasing with every passing deals. The next DLC about to come over in a couple of months being one of the most anticipated expansions out of all expansions that Paradox has ever had. There are some very specific things I want to discuss about EU5 however so we're gonna divide this particular video in a few chapters. First we're gonna discuss why I suspect EU5 is being developed as we speak. Second we're gonna talk about the current development stage of EU5 if it is being developed. Again, this is all hypothetical, but I will back up everything I say with logical arguments, of course, and some very interesting and juicy forum uh, information that is easily available to anybody. You just need to check the Paradox forums for yourself. That's it. Then we're going to go on and discuss a potential start date for EU5 because, as Johan recently said in uh, a Paradox forum post, if and when we make EU5, the likelihood of it being a different start date is rather high. This is from the forums, again, not leaking anything, don't worry. Kind of funny, this was a reply to another post on uh, the Paradox forums about a different start date for U4, and he does also mention how U1 started in 1492, which was the beginning of the colonial age, let's we call it, or age of discovery, right? 1411 was the date for EU2, EU3 had 1453, which is the fall of Constantinople, and that was switched to 1399, way before for the fall of Constantinople with the In Nomine DLC and then of course EU4 with 1444. Different start dates. So yeah, the third thing we're going to discuss is potential start dates for EU5. The last thing in this uh, video's agenda is going to be the release date for EU5. I'm going to be calculating a few things. I'm going to calculate essentially the previous release dates uh, for Paradox games and what would be the most uh, logical assumption for a release date considering what they also have already mentioned that they're going to release in the nearby futures such as City Skylines 2 and so on. So to start off with uh, why I suspect EU5 is being developed, of course, as I mentioned earlier, EU4 right now is actually losing a lot of players. As you can see, EU4 did have a pretty significant boost to players, uh, what was that, in 2020 June, that was with the release of the Emperor DLC. That was the highest amount of players that EU4 has had ever, 47,000 average players, and then it's just been constant around 20 to 25,000 for the next two years afterwards. A few more jumps here and there with a couple of extra DLCs released. 34,000 with the most recent Domination DLC and then it just dropped down massively to an average of 20 something. Realistically speaking though, it's actually around 15 to 16,000 and then two to three months after a DLC is released, it goes down to 14, 13 even thousand. As you can see here, November, December, 12 to 13,000 is what it was at after what was it like uh, the Origins DLC or Lions of the North? I think Lions of the North afterwards. It just completely died out until um, once again in April of 2023 Domination came out and again it's dying out massively. It's dying out a lot faster though than with previous DLCs so that's one of the things that I'm worried about that U4 might not um, have such a long longevity as I was hoping it would have. But hey, I hope you guys prove me wrong and you play the schnapps out of this game because it's an amazing game with one of the most uh, least toxic 
communities out of all the paradox communities speaking of hoi 4 though if we check hearts of iron 4 look at this boys an average of 32,000 quite a few months after the release of a dlc is a really stark contrast to e4 and look at that previously it was around 2014 it actually had a pretty tough start it started with 8 5 5 000, 4 000 average and then as they released more content for hoi 4 it just absolutely exploded look at that most recently even months after the most uh, recent dlc is out they're still going strong increasing the player base with every single passing month obviously that's for one because hearts of iron 4 is a much newer game than e4 is it's got like what four or five years or something of the sort 2014 2016 plus yeah yeah around five six seven eight years I'm, I'm really bad with mathematics some of you probably know that by now the point is though that a newer engine helped out the game massively since it allows the company it allows paradox to come up with new mechanics for hearts of iron 4 that make it a lot more enjoyable that's not really the case with eu4 sadly because eu4 has an older engine every single new dlc that comes out for eu4 it breaks stuff there's new bugs and it's limited the amount of new mechanics that they can actually add to the game which is one of the reasons that obviously considering this was your flagship or hey maybe it still is your flagship i'm just assuming it's not the flagship because of the amount of uh, players for hearts of iron 4 but more so over if it is your flagship you obviously want to upgrade to the next iteration it's also just logical to have a new game when you've had as johan says eu1 eu2 eu3 eu4 and the gap between all of these has actually been shorter than the gap between eu4 and eu5 so i'm also assuming that that e5 is gonna be an absolutely beast of a game i know for a fact from certain things that were said at certain conferences that games like imperator rome were essentially more of a platform to see new changes to test new things that they can do with the newer engines which we see afterwards in ck3 for example so they've got a ton of potential to use those new engines and there's obviously a lot of money to be made out of it so so end of the day, you know, if a product is feasible and it has the returns needed, then it is going to be created. Plus, Johan wouldn't go on the forums and say, if and when we make U5, the likelihood of it being a different date is rather high, unless they are actually making U5. Otherwise, he would just say, yeah, we're not making U5, guys. End of story. Now, the second thing that makes me realize that U5 is being developed, then it's actually a lot more important, lies in Barcelona. Why does it lie in Barcelona? Because as you guys know, EU4 right now is being developed, let's say, or all the new content is being uh, made by Paradox Tinto, which is a separate division of Paradox Interactive that was created with the sole purpose of managing EU4 and no other game that we know of. Now, Paradox Tinto has recruited a ton of new people. They've got so many new employees that are making DLCs, like, uh, for example, the most recent DLC, Domination. A lot of the mission trees in that were missions taken from the uh, flavor universalis mod which has been taken down from the workshop in the meanwhile and the developer of uh, flavor universalis is directly working as an employee for paradox now so then the question again is what about the original developers for eu4 that were sent to paradox tinto if most of the development team that is working on the dlcs and the expansions for eu4 right now are previous modders and they're essentially doing revamped versions of their mission trees and their and their particular mechanics that they have from their previous mods what is the main team working on i mean it's not like they just get paid and they don't do anything for that matter it's not like you establish a brand new division for your company in another country you hire a lot of new people you pay a lot of everything that comes alongside starting that new division including rent for the apartments all the money for the people the salaries all the money for the equipment for a 10 year old game that has has 14,000 average players and for whom all the new DLCs have been made by just one part of the team in Paradox Tinto. So obviously that's pretty self-explanatory. They're working on something else EU4 related, but it's not actually EU4 because it's clearly EU5. Again, this is just my speculation. It's uh, it's not confirmed by anybody in Paradox, all right? Just saying, so keep that in mind. Now, the next question that we need to address is what would the current development stage of EU4 
5b as of today in order to answer this of course it is a little bit more trickier to answer but i think the easiest thing we could do is just look first and foremost at when paradox into was established and work our way from there basically sometime in 2021 paradox into was established in 2022 april 6th they made a post here and johan said himself that there are 26 people at paradox tinto and they're looking for another qa another and another content designer to fill the team these have in the meanwhile been filled of course by some of the most skilled people out there by the way i have to give kudos to uh, the paradox tinto team the domination and the lions of the north dlcs have been absolutely insane personally i feel like these have been the best dlcs for eu4 alongside to a certain degree emperor not counting the bugs and even leviathan you know what even though paradox tinto's first dlc the leviathan dlc did have a lot of bugs they did fix those bugs in record time and the amount of content with leviathan was absolutely astonishing but here's why i also mentioned leviathan right leviathan was the first dlc fully released by the uh, paradox into team which at the time had 26 people okay not just a couple a lot of people working on on uh, just expansion i don't think so but anyway the point is that they've been using these dlcs as a means of training a lot of new people as well towards a larger project that has not yet been named but let me hear it in the comment section what you think this larger new project is because i think we all know what the larger new project is right in fact i did a little bit more digging and apparently it was established sometimes in 2020 paradox tinto as it says here june 1st 2020 stockholm paradox interactive a publisher and developer of games that age well today announced the opening of paradox tinto so i guess we could say june 1st 2020 is the actual paradox tinto birthday a new development studio located in barcelona this is the seventh studio operated by paradox interactive now present in four countries it has more studios since 2020 by the way it's actually growing at an astonishing rate from a gaming company perspective we do know that since 2020 they were mostly working on the initial dlcs for uh eu4 from the tinto side what i just mentioned earlier the leviathan dlc that was what it was but this is three years ago guys three years ago it's more than three years three years and one month act so if in these three years they've been working on initially just a few dlcs and then after expanding the team they started working on eu5 also we need to think about how long it took them to develop stellaris how long it took them to develop victoria 3 how long it took them to develop imperator rome hearts of iron 4 and so on right the shortest one in my opinion i think is imperator rome i remember uh when i was when i went to paradox con and i think this is public knowledge if i'm not mistaken uh johan himself said that uh, Imperator Rome was a love project that he put a lot of work into with only three people and he managed to do it in six months. That is insane to me. Three people doing an entire game in six months is absolutely astonishing. Of course, Imperator Rome has uh, had a rough patch in recent years and development pretty much stopped for it, although it has restarted a little bit recently. If you guys want me to do a video on Imperator Rome and what I think is the future of Imperator Rome, let me know in the comment section. If we get four or five thousand likes on this video, I'll do that video because I think I have have some info that you guys might be interested in but yeah as i was saying six months for imperator rome vicky 3 was a few years though hearts of iron 4 and stellaris again a couple of years maybe a little bit more than that obviously nobody will know the official information until paradox releases it and i don't think they need to really but what i've found from the forums for example posts from 2014 saying that uh hearts of iron 4 has been in development for two years and a half and then it came out in 2016 it is possible that hearts of iron 4 was developed for four to five years prior to release and we all know that hoi 4 on release was not really an amazing game in fact it took it a few years to get to the stage in which it is now it is safe to assume that it will likely take eu5 four to five years to finish development considering that it is likely going to be the prized possession of paradox interactive and they have a lot of planned things uh, for europa universalis 5 now if development started roughly around 2021 late 2021 after the leviathan dlc maybe 2022 then that means that you've got one one and a half maybe two years of development into um into eu5 so then we go back to this post over here and we realize that they likely did not choose the start date yet and that leads us to the third part of this video what would the start date of eu5 be because johan does mention that the likelihood of a different start date is rather high that means that they know it's not any of these so 
we can rest assured it's not 1444, not 1453, not 1492, and so on, right? So then we have two sides here. Either he does know the start date, and they did do the start date, which means that the basic history coding for the game has been done, or it has started being done, which means the game is actually probably mid-development, let's say 70% towards finish, in which case we might hear EU5 being announced at the next PDX Con, not the one in 2023, the one in 2024, or, or maybe 2023, but I, I highly doubt that, or 2025, which is the more realistic one, because Paradox has a tendency of releasing games a few months, six months or so after announcement, right? So I personally wager that 2025 is when we're going to get an announcement for EU5, but I'm really, really hopeful it's a lot earlier because I would love to play EU5 a lot earlier. I'm also a little bit more realistic and I hope that, you know, they do an amazing job with the game. So I don't want them to rush. I really don't want them to rush. Now, let's talk about the start date itself, right? We all know that the start dates for the previous Europa Universalises have been significant days in history. 1453, the collapse of the Roman Empire. 1444, the Battle of Varna's aftermath. 1492, the Age of Discovery. 1419, the horrors of the conquest of Normandy by the English in the Hundred Years' Wars, right? The conquest of Rowan. But here's the thing. There's two things. We need to take into account two main aspects when designing a start date for a game like EU4. It has to be a significant date that had a massive impact in the world around us, and it has to be a date that people will enjoy playing. That said, we all know nobody plays the late part of the campaign. Probably 5% of the player base actually plays past late 1600s, which is why I think the game is going to start a little bit earlier. And if I was a guessing man, I would guess that that date would be 1356, because this would be perfect. Imagine, 1356 means you would have a good 300 years that is the prime time of the high middle ages, the change between medieval society, feudal society, the age of discovery, the early modern ages, where gunpowder played a significant role in history and changed the way that the world, well, is today, right? So if we look a little bit at 1356, I'm using a 1356 mod, by the way, if you're curious, let me know in the comment section, I'll let you know what mod it is, or I'll just put it in the description. The world of 1356 is super different. Starting from the West, the English are in the height of the early phase of the Hundred Years' War, just 20 or so, 20 or less years prior to this, the start of the war between the English and the French, which would last roughly a hundred and more years, not a hundred, actually like 106 more maybe. And it would change the way that the world is in the West completely. The Byzantine Empire in the East is in a really bad position, let's face it. The Serbians have their empire. 1356 is one of the most important periods in Serbian history. It's the beginning of the downfall of the Serbians, let's face it, and the beginning of the ascension of the Ottomans, with Orhan Osmanoglu absolutely raffle stomping into the European parts, crushing the Serbs, the Bulgarians, making mincemeat out of the Byzantines, conquering and subjugating, well, integrating, let's say, the rest of the Turkic Beyliks. Eventually, the Ottomans became, as we all know, the ultimate uh, super scion of the Balkans and eastern parts of the known world, let's say, for a bit. But starting in 1356, give gives everybody in here a chance at changing that. Maybe the Ottomans are going to get crushed early on. Maybe the Byzantines are going to be the big bad boy. Maybe the Serbians are going to be the new Ottomans in this timeline. Maybe the Duchy of Thessaly, which is actually a vassal of the Serbs, but alongside the Athenians, the Haeans, and so on, are basically remnants of the Crusaders that destroyed the uh, Byzantines and started their own little schnapple dupers around this area, right? Not only that, but the white horde and the various other Mongolian hordes and the Yuan as well are still around and they're exerting a massive influence all around the world. So just portraying this and showing how the initial small Muscovite state started into the east managed to use the fact that it was uh, the favorite of all the Nezats in this land to its advantage and use the money that it was collecting from the other guys to just make itself more powerful and eventually crush the uh, horde and the late 1400s. That's an interesting thing. Maybe we have a different path for Kiev, Kernigov, Lithuania, or Poland. Because remember, we still have some uh, Romuvan heretics, pagans in these lands. Maybe there's a different side of the Lithuanians that we'll see in a 1356 start date. Suffice to say, it is a very interesting start date with a lot of new opportunities and possibilities.
abilities both in the European continent as well as all around the world be it in the Asian parts the African parts or even in the Indian parts it provides a very interesting run and it makes the game insanely fun because you go as I said through the vast changes of the high middle ages from a military perspective a cultural perspective and from just a thought perspective technology playing a major role in all of these changes right and the advent of new thoughts as well there are some other start dates i think would be plausible such as 1405 with the ottoman interregnum this was a period in which the ottomans were on the verge of collapse the civil war in the ottoman empire could have played out very differently the timurids were at their height with the timur lane here absolutely crushing everybody and basically humiliating the ottomans and there's also the option of a later start date such as the 1508 start date with the war of the league of cambrai but here's why i don't think anything past 1500 is plausible for eu4 for eu5 simply because the world is a lot more centralized past 1500s that means there's bigger blobs there's less opportunities for smaller nations to actually make a name for themselves i mean it's interesting to play as the ottomans at what would be the beginning of the height of the ottoman empire same goes for the russians and the uh, uh, french and the austrians and so on but i don't think it would be as fun as making that empire yourself starting from a smaller little state and growing into an empire so that's why it's likely going to be an earlier date and considering that johan said that he's not thinking of any of the most important 1400 dates it's only logical to think that he's thinking about the most important 1300 dates and not 1399 also so that leaves out 1356 i'm like 90% sure that it is going to be 1356 or somewhere around that that period if i'm wrong whenever e5 comes out i'll tell you what i'll go to paradox tinto uh, office and i'll do 100 push-ups in front of the uh, paradox tinto office as a way of uh, apologizing for being wrong about the start date of u5 now guys if you enjoyed this video and i really hope you did i would love it if you told me what you think is the launch date for u5 what you think is the start date for u5 for that matter in the comment section below i'll debate it with you and i'm just honestly curious to see what the community itself thinks also if you enjoyed this video check out this awesome ottoman video until the next time and a massive shout out to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i really wouldn't be able to do this without your support guys